are you going to look at today? Well, the three of us, me, you, and Shopcat, well, we're going to look at some knives with some interesting and awesome blade shapes, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Turn down the volume. Here comes a little bit of music. I went through everything here at the house and I picked out five knives that I think have got some of the most unique blade shapes of all the knives that either I own or that have come in. One of them is a reblade, but the rest of them are just the native blades that came with these knives. So let's get these out of the way and let's talk about them individually. So the first knife I picked out is a 940, Benchmade 940, that has had a transparent knives reblade. Now this is done in M390 and it is super thin behind the edge. This came in once for sharpening and now has come back for review. When it came in for sharpening, it had the original scales. These are an aftermarket scale. I believe these were flitanium. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, action on this is a little stiff. I think it just needs some break in, but this thing is really cool. It's got a lot of really awesome lines. I like the 940. I have my 940 that I franken 40 together so i've done some modifications to mine but this is a full-on mod this knife looks nowhere near like it did let me grab mine and show you the difference so mine is the original configuration you can see the scales are way different this it does have the original pocket clip this one does uh but the blade is completely different um these originally came green you can see that is a really really nice pattern on that these are very nice scales i'm 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 curious to see who made those scales, I'd have to ask him, but it no way resembles anymore the 940. It, 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 it does not, it looks like a completely and totally different knife. You're probably going to get to see this knife in another video I've got planned. So yeah, the scales on this are really good. I, I'm not hundred percent sure, like I said, who did the scales, but they are awesome looking. And uh, I'm not going to lie, these transparent knife reblades are really, really good. Uh, I know that Cole over at Tri-State EDC just recently threw one in on his 940. Like he went and bought a 940 specifically to put a blade in it. So there you go. There's the first one, the rebladed 940 with the transparent knives blade in it. And it just looks awesome. So this next knife is my Ultratech UTX 85. And it, I mean, it, there's nothing special or unique about this except the blade shape. Like I said, this is all blade shapes. And so unlike a lot of dagger blades, this is Microtech's Spartan blade shape. And it's basically just two Tontos that have been put together to make one blade. And it gives it a very awesome aesthetic. It is extremely piercing, but that tip was gonna be resilient. Now, like I said in a video, you can see mine has an issue where for some reason, every time I open and close this knife, it winds up getting dull on this side. But these are great, great knives. Um, I love all the Microtech out the fronts. They're some of the best ones out there. But this blade shape, like I was saying, is just incredibly cool looking because it comes down broad with that big central fuller. You've got the speed holes in the middle, and then you've got that, that striking point on it. Now, action on these things are great, but that blade, I'm going to tell you right now, I have just played around with it and poked some stuff with it. Like I said, it's a limited edition model, so I'm I try to be cautious with it. I don't want to ruin it, uh, but it is extremely piercing. Uh, like this would be some, this would be a tool that you would use for only one purpose. And we all know what that is, so we won't get into it, but yeah, really, really awesome knife. And just overall, it's a, it's a good looking knife. Um, I think that the UTX 85 is just about the perfect size platform for an OTF. So there you go. There is number two. The Ultratech UTX-85 by Microtech with the Spartan blade shape. This next knife has got a cleaver-esque style blade. This is, I mean, it's basically a modified Warren Cliff. It comes down nice and clean. This is the Ferrum Forge Buck, short for Buccaneer. Um, it was done by Mass Drop. Uh, it's a Ferrum Forge design. You know, I'm friends with those guys. This is an awesome, awesome knife. The blade shape on it is a cleaver of sorts, but it's got this broad blade. It, it does. It looks like 
they called it the Buccaneer. It definitely looks like a pirate sword of sorts. But the thing that makes it awesome is all these facets that you get. So you have this big broad blade. It's really functional, but you get an aesthetic with it with this cleaver style blade that has all these facets. It just looks awesome. It is really functional. You've got that deep fuller and everything on it. But aside from just being striking, very, like I said, very functional blade shape. It's nice and broad, so it can come down and thin behind the edge. It cuts really well. It is well ground, well done. The fuller on it, or not the fuller, I'm sorry, but the flipper aperture has got this huge opening on it that makes it just look interesting in the open position. And then you have some other things like the lanyard hole back here in the backspacer. Um, is kind of cool, but the, you know, the blade shape overall on this is what really sets it apart. It, I mean, it looks like something you would see in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean as a full-sized sword. So really awesome knife. I do like this. I'm thinking about letting this one go, but yeah, as far as like interesting and awesome blade shapes, this is one of the ones that is in my case that I look at and I'm like, yeah, that's pretty cool. So there was your number three, the Ferrum Forge Buccaneer. So you guys knew if I was going to talk about unique blade shapes, we would definitely have to have my Grimsmo Norseman in here. So the Grimsmo Norseman is one of those knives that really people kind of, it's, it's, it's one of those ones, either you love it or you hate it. There's no real middle ground about the blade shape. I love the blade shape. I have come to find it extremely functional, uh, but it is unique. It has this deep radius area here where it's been you know, recurved out here and it's recurved on the front. So it gives you this unusual shape coming down the middle and then it broadens up into that Tonto. Sorry guys, I forgot to mute that. It broadens up into this Tonto where you've got the hollow and then you have this big broad uh, edge here that is done as a full convex. Uh, now this is my personal, it gets used a lot. So you can see it's it's been abused, it's been scratched up and stuff. Uh, but it, it is a very unique blade shape. Some people say it looks like a, a certain animal's anatomy. I think it looks like an angry pelican. It looks like a duck-billed pelican. Have you ever seen the duck-billed pelican or the, the spoon-billed pelican? Kind of looks like that. I, I find it unusual and attractive in its own way. But as far as use, this is probably one of the knives that I use the most just because it works so well. I used, I put it in the video about doing edge maintenance because I use it so much. Um, that unique blade shape, you can get up on it and you can do some small tasks up on that forward, more resilient, much stronger area of the front edge. And then for slicing tasks, you've got this really nice long recurve that is hollow ground, well, hollow milled, I should say, down here. And it just glides through material. It's probably one of the best cardboard cutters I have ever had. And just the action on it's amazing. Plus, just the fact that all the machining on it is done so incredibly well. There you go. There is your number four, the Grimsmo Norseman. And so the last knife that I picked here for our fifth knife, I, I mean, you cannot argue that that is a very, that is a very unique blade shape. This is that S- I, it's not even really, I wanted to say it's a hawkbill. It's a type of hawkbill, but it's a reverse S, I guess, is what uh, Sal was calling it. it. This is the Spyderco Matriarch 2. This is 100% a self-defense knife. There's another blade that they have that make that has this exact blade shape. Uh, it's just a little bit bigger. It's the Civilian. So this is kind of a, a, a more budget-friendly version of the Civilian. I honestly do like this knife a lot. It's set up for left-hand carry so that if I'm in, this is my bad neighborhood knife. I'm not gonna lie, guys. If I'm going somewhere I'm not comfortable going to, this is in my left-hand pocket. This is 100% uh, meant for self-defense, but it has such a striking look with that great big hook at the front, like a talon, and then this belly here. So when you would use this, the point was that this, this would drive in and then draw that material into that deep, just devastating, devastating cut. Um, but when you look at that blade shape, it's really unique, really predatory, pretty awesome looking. And it, it's just, you know, it's a cool variant on the, uh, on the uh, Spyderco Endura series. Sorry, I couldn't think, I was trying to think of the, the 
the uh, the series. So this falls into that Endura series of Spydercos I like. The Ergos on this are amazing. But just that is an aggressive, aggressive blade. You saw this in Knives I Would Not Open in Public. Uh, you saw that in, bit, in that video. But it's ground really well. It is incredibly sharp. Even the serrations are just razor, razor sharp on this one. So as much as I bag on Spyderco, this is one they got right. This one is in VG10. Uh, this one was made in Japan. So awesome looking knife. Awesome, awesome. Guys, let's turn this around. Do some final thoughts and then get you out of here. Go guys, that was five knives with unique and awesome blade shapes that I really like. So I just thought I would show that to you. I know you've seen some of those knives before, but we're do I'm trying to change up some of the format. So if you guys like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down, but tell me why I can't change the content. If you don't, tell me what you don't like. It's called constructive criticism. If some people can't take it. I prefer it if you don't like some of the formats. Um, if you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon, and make sure that you've got notifications set up on your device because even if you hit the bell icon and you don't have notifications set up, you will not get notified. Uh, other ways you can support the channel financially, uh, I have a membership down below. Uh, there's currently like 54 or 55 members. Um, they all get access to my Gilded server where we all chat. Uh, they all save $5 per knife on my sharpening service. Um, different tiers get different benefits. I have some exclusive content. And if you're a premium tier member, you get access to a sharpening tutorial series that I've set up for them. Other ways you support the channel is I have a bunch of affiliate links down below. Sometimes if I can find them, I put links to knives that I'm showing down there, but there's a lot of other stuff, stones and recommended EDC items that you guys could choose from and it doesn't cost you anything extra. I just get a portion of it at checkout. And the final way is I have a merchandise store where I've set up a coupon code for you to save 10%. Uh, and that coupon code is Crazy Sharp, all one word, capital C, capital S. Crazy Sharp works anywhere on Ember Shirt Co. where my merchandise store is. And if you send me pictures of you wearing my merchandise, I will put them in videos. Guys, I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video.